Good evening, everybody. My name is Louise Connolly. I'm the head of educational consultants and teacher training at Macmillan. And I would like to welcome you all to the third edition of the Macmillan Online Teachers Days. We're really delighted that you could all join us today. And we hope and um, really that those who have attended previous editions will also enjoy the teacher training offer that we have this year. Today's event, which is aimed at teachers of pre-primary and primary uh, Macmillan users, um, will take place from six to half seven, and we have two talks. The next pre-primary and primary event will be on Wednesday, the 18th of April, same time, six to half seven. And the third and last pre-primary and primary event will be on Tuesday, the 8th of May. Um, I'm really delighted that you could be all here and for those who are returning I would like you I would like to thank you for the feedback that you gave us last year on the events because that feedback has really helped us to design a program that we think will respond to the needs that you have in your classes and we hope that today you will go away with practical relevant easy to use activities and ideas that will help you to enhance your teaching and your pupils' learning. This year, 2018, is a very, very special year for Macmillan. Those of you who attended last year's events will remember that we were celebrating the 30th anniversary of Macmillan in Spain. Well, 2018 marks the 175th anniversary of Macmillan. 175 years serving the public, uh, producing great works of literature, accompanying teachers through their professional development. The company was started in 1843 by the two Macmillan brothers, Daniel and Alexander, and they have started publishing universally loved authors such as Thomas Hardy, um, Lewis Carroll, poets uh, such as Lord Alfred Tennyson, Rudyard Kipling, W.B. Yeats, to name but a few. And we are delighted that we are still here today to serve you. Uh, we would like to hear from you about your experience of attending these events. So we would encourage you to post comments on our Twitter account, hashtag Macmillan Online Teachers Days. I mentioned at the beginning that um, these events are aimed at users. As users of Macmillan courses, you will know that there is a special site on our website called Macmillan Advantage. And there you will be able to find a lot of really useful ideas, activities, articles, videos, clips, um, also programaciones, rubricas, news about new trends in teaching and education. On our teacher's corner there you will find lots of really practical, daily practical teaching ideas and activities which you can download. So please go there. If you haven't signed up yet, please do as soon as possible because there are so many useful ideas and activities there for you to use in your classes. I mentioned at the beginning that uh, we did a lot of feedback with teachers who attended last year. And many teachers said to us that they really appreciated being able to connect up uh, online from their home or from the staff room at school and yes that's really really important but also for us what's really important is that we maintain a constant interaction with you the audience and the speakers Karis and Sophie this evening for example and so during their presentations we are going to launch different interactions between you and the speakers they will be what we call have your says, which will be a question or a task that will appear on your screen 
in a window on your screen and all you have to do is write your answer. We will give you say half a, sec half a minute or, or 60 seconds to, to, to answer. Another interactive tool that we will use is called a poll. And a poll is basically, as you know, a multiple choice question. So you just tick the answer that's appropriate for you. And then finally, at the end of each presentation today, we will launch what we call a send your question. Because we would like to hear from you at the end of this, these presentations. If you have any questions, if you have any doubts, if you have any comments to make about the, com uh, the, the content of these talks, please, please do take advantage of these tools because we really want to be as if you are here with us in this room today. Okay, so now it just remains for me to welcome our first speaker, Karis Shannon. Karis is a very experienced teacher, English language teacher, teacher trainer, also performer who has professional credits in theatre and writing. And Karis is going to talk to us today about creative possibility in the pre-primary primary classroom. So a very warm welcome to you, Karis. Thank you, Louise. Thank you. Um, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. I'm delighted. Um, congratulations to Macmillan for their anniversary. Um, I'm really proud to be associated with the, the teacher days and the, the online training. It's a fantastic possibility to share ideas and knowledge. And even though we're not close together, I hope that people will send us their opinions, uh, their questions and take part in the polls that we've got waiting for them. Um, we're going to talk about creative possibility and we're going to start with a question. So, um, I'd like to ask everyone who's watching, what does creativity mean to you? So this is the first of our have your say polls. Exactly. So it's a have your say. As I said at the beginning, you will see this question in a window on your screen. So please do write in what you think creativity is for you. For me, for example, Karis, um, well, creativity can take different forms, but if I'm thinking about working with very young children, mm -hmm. infants, pre-primary, three to five-year-olds, and then primary from six up to 11 years of age, I suppose it's, it's about, in my experience, it's, it's been about um, looking for opportunities in the class mm -hmm. to allow them to express themselves in some way that it's not all completely scripted. Exactly. So perhaps in a way I want them to show something that perhaps I hadn't thought about before. Fantastic. I don't know. How about, let's see. What do you think? Let us know if you can type a short answer and we'll respond to any, any answers that we have from you. For me, um, creativity really means possibility, which is why the, the talk is called Creative Possibility. Mm. Um, I think spontaneity is really important and curiosity for me, yeah. which links well, to what you're saying, Louise. Exactly, and um, some interesting um, points are being made here about um, Sarah um, Dodman is saying thinking out of the box. Great. Okay. okay. And Josefina, it's to build up something new using the knowledge you've got. Fantastic. Creativity from Christina Newsome. Creativity involves using your imagination to come up with a way to solve a problem. Oh, I love that one. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, no, absolutely. So problem solving. Mm -hmm. We often think of problem solving as being something very logical and mathematical, but exactly. here we're looking at it. In, the, in a creative context. Mm -hmm. um, Vanessa Garcia says, expressing your ideas, having good ideas, solving problems. Jose Ignacio Campos Arnaf, mm -hmm. Arn Arnaith, sorry about that, Jose <laughs> Ignacio. It is the possibility of doing something that appears out of the blue with no preparation, which Fantastic. is what you were talking about yeah. spontaneously. I think that's something Great. that I'm really passionate about in my own teaching practice is always allowing and building in opportunities for spontaneous reactions, for choice making, which we're going to talk about, 
and um, really encouraging creativity by using the, the, the language that the pupils already have, but allowing them to see it from different ways and allowing them to play with it and to, to create with it in ways that they might not even have connected at that point. So it's really about making connections as well between vocabulary and exercises and everyday exchanges. So what we're going to, to talk about today, and we're definitely going to have a conversation between you and I and between everyone out there, we're talking firstly about giving choices, which as I said is something I'm really passionate about. I think it's something that um, new teachers can sometimes find more difficult because we are all nervous when we first start teaching and we tend to want to control everything. But I think with experience, um, you can really see the value of giving choices to your students and also that when they're presented within structures that there's absolutely no problem with control whatsoever. So we're also going to talk about story and theatre skills. Um, as Louise said, I've previously worked in the, the theatre both as a, a performer and a facilitator and I'm very passionate about whole body experiences for the, for the pupils, that they're not sitting down receiving information, that they're reacting with their bodies and with their minds, with their voices. Um, we'll go on to talk about visual response, so another form of creativity. And then um, I think everyone will be curious to, to talk about number four, which is celebrating creative energy in the moment. So in that part of the talk, we'll look at ways to bring energy up, so stirrers and settlers to bring it back down. Also addressing any fears that people might have about losing control um, if things get a little bit uh, overly spontaneous, which I think can never happen too much in mm -hmm. the classroom. <laughs> okay, um, so we'd like you to have um, your opinion again by asking you to answer this poll. So I'd like to know how often do you give your pupils choices about how they participate in a class activity? So giving them a choice within that activity or about what activity they're going to do. So is it in every class as often as possible, not very often or never? So we're sort of curious to see where people mm -hmm. are at at the moment. Exactly. So we'll give you half a minute more or less or 25 seconds to choose the correct answer, the most appropriate answer from, for you to the poll which is on your screen now. Okay. And mm, well I suppose, I don't know, when I started teaching you made mm -hmm. a point earlier that um, when we start uh, teaching first we're less, um, we take less risks, yes. we're we're more perhaps conservative because we're learning on the job and I suppose when I was a relatively new teacher I don't think I would have done it every class or mm -hmm. even as often as possible probably more like not very often mm -hmm. occasionally mm -hmm. I would I would say but then as time went on I think I become I became just more confident and 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 um, I, I also became more comfortable with classroom management, mm -hmm. which I think mm -hmm. you also mentioned is a key concern for, for people. Absolutely. And I know it is in large classes. Exactly. Um, exactly. And mixed ability mm -hmm. and, you know, um, constraints to, to do with, with space as well, the layout of the classroom, it's not so mm -hmm. easy. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I think as time went on, I, I became more more um, more confident, I would say. So we're going to now see the results. Great, thank okay. you to everybody thank um, you. for <laughs> replying. So we can see 20, well, 55% uh, as often as possible. So there's a Fantastic. lot of very Great. enthusiastic, I think, confident people out there. 24%, mm -hmm. which is also very high, say um, every class. Okay, fantastic. Um, not very often, 21%, mm -hmm. you'd expect around that percentage. But what is really, um, well, it's great to see that nobody has put zero Fantastic. or never, <laughs> never well as um, an option. That's so great. People that's, are that's really encouraging. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, I agree with what you said, Louise. I, 
when I first did, started teaching, definitely didn't give as many choices as mm -hmm. I give now. And in fact, I would be in the percentage that say that they give a choice in every class. I would go so far as to say I try to give a choice in every class, in every activity where possible. And I think that the student response and the student development is the, the evidence that you need as to why, because they thoroughly enjoy it, they're completely engaged in the activity, and they become confident users of the language and check context, check meaning through use, and most importantly through spontaneous use, although of course we're putting in the scaffolding that they need mm. for every activity. So talking about the, the pre-primary classroom, um, a very simple way to give choices, if, if you are in the percentage that don't usually do it, it's a little something to start you off. Um, when you're doing pair work, and as Louise said, in large groups, um, I've taught myself in um, a school with large groups of 25 to 30 you know, school children, and they do tend to stay at their tables because moving them logistically is very, very difficult. So this is a simple exercise where the students only have to be facing each other mm. as we are now. Mm -hmm. And for example, revising parts of the body can be as simple as, usually as a teacher, you might recap this vocabulary by saying, okay, everybody, finger in the air, now touch your nose, for example. <laughs> we both got it right, that's a good <laughs> sign. Okay, touch your mouth, and so on, you would go through the vocabulary set. Well, a very easy step on from that is to ask students, people start to work in pairs and ask them to touch each other's uh, faces in the same place, still led by the teacher. So you say, okay, touch your partner's nose, for example. Touch your partner's ears. This ah. one always gets <laughs> lots of laughs. Okay. <laughs> And then the next step, which is what sometimes people don't go towards, but I would really encourage people to do it, is to say, you choose. So you would model this with a strong pair of students. Mm -hmm. Okay, first, that's always important so that you're giving clear visual and, and oral signals to the students. Say, okay, you choose. Touch your... Shoulders. Okay. Okay, and then the teacher would say, okay, guys, touch your partners. And I might say, head. Okay. Okay. <laughs> very simple, very easy to control, and lots and lots of mm. laughs there in the classroom, and a really big sense of achievement, because that's what sometimes we forget, mm -hmm. is that when students are making their own choices, they have a genuine sense of satisfaction in the work that they're doing, and, and that motivates them a lot. Okay, so another simple point is when you have a, a piece of finished work, Let's imagine this is a beautiful picture. You might say, where shall we put this? Okay, here or here, for example. And the students, you're also adding vocabulary in naturally. Say here, here or there. You can um, present that within a framework so that they're not saying over there or across the road. <laughs> um, but again, a nice way to give choices. And another simple step is if you have typical class songs like I do in my classes, the hello song, the counting song, um, the if you're happy and you know it song, you simply ask them once they're familiar with the songs which one they want to sing first and, and allow them a real genuine choice. So a couple more ideas um, that I've used within my classes that have have given really, really good results with the, the pupils. Um, what shall we do or what can we do and how many? So with this age group, you're obviously some of the vocabulary sets or actions such as jump, run, clap, stamp your feet, touch your nose, etc. Um, what you can offer once students have drilled that vocabulary and they feel really comfortable with it, is to say, okay, what can we do? So if you imagine we're in a large group and I model a couple of those and then I say, what can we do, Louise? We can clap our hands. Okay, and you simply accept the idea and you clap. Another way to develop it is to say, how many? 
Mm. Five. <laughs> okay. And that's good because you always need a little bit of thinking yes. time, okay? <laughs> even for us adults. Um, and then you simply clap five times. If you develop this, I use this in every single class with this age group as my warm-up routine. Every time we have a new piece of action vocabulary, we add it into that. And now what's happened with, with this particular group is that they are spontaneously adding vocabulary that they've heard in action songs or that they've seen in the storybook that we're also studying. Um, and in one class recently I said, what can we do? What else can we do? I've added. And they said, play the guitar. Hmm. And we've never studied that vocabulary. I've not drilled the action or the, the idea of play the guitar. It's simply in one of the other songs that we've done. So I think that really shows that taking a choice adds a level of understanding that really allows students to take an idea, a concept, and see where they can put it in relation to language use. And that's so important. OK, another simple task. Um, we're going to do a drawing, Louise. Okay, great. So, uh, I have my drawing here. You'll see it in a moment. Don't worry, everyone at home <laughs> or at work. So I'll say, let's draw a monster. Is it big okay. or small? It's big. Okay, so it's a monster. A big monster body. Um, how many eyes has he got? Four. Okay. Okay. Scary. <laughs> um, how many noses does Two. he have? Too big or small? Oh, big. big. Too big, big noses. noses. <laughs> okay, and then you might add emotions. Is he happy or sad? He's very happy. Okay, very happy. So I'm drawing a huge mouth, very badly. Um, you could obviously simply ask, how's he feeling, depending on the, the age of the group and what you've done with them. So here's uh, Louise's and my monster. Yeah, beautifully created together, spontaneously. And um, then we would use this again to check back that vocabulary. Say, okay, how's he feeling, Louise? Happy, mm -hmm. very happy. Exactly. Um, is his nose big or small? It's big, okay. very big. How many eyes does he have? He's got four, okay. four eyes. And depending, you can count, you can say big or small with gestures. And this works with animals, people, family, really any vocabulary where they're self-creating something and then concept checking back with the group, okay? So that's just a couple of quick ideas. Um, with primary, these obviously work with the younger primary. And then another example here is when you're using flashcards, mm. um, often we use uh, TPR, um, hit or strike or use a fly swatter sometimes mm. to strike the correct flash card. So the teacher would say the vocabulary and the student would do the action. The second round of this, which I encourage as soon as is possible, is for the student to say, okay, you choose mm. which one. And again, using gestures, using visual gesturing to make it very clear. So you choose which one. And then they simply say the word and do the same exercise, but they are making the choice. The next phase of that is to ask one student to be teacher and to call out the vocabulary for the other students. Mm -hmm. And again, I think sometimes we forget that this generates such a lot of fun, laughter, excitement, oh, I can be a teacher, okay, touch the really difficult one, and they don't realize the whole time they're saying the desired vocabulary mm. set. So that's um, a great exercise. So we'd like to know what you're thinking about all of this again. Uh, have your say. <laughs> yes, so we have another, you will see another have your say on your screen now. And it's basically three questions which are all related. Have you already used any of these ideas successfully in your class or classes? If yes, which ones? Mm -hmm. And if no, which ones would you be interested in using and applying? Okay, so we'll give you again half a minute to answer, answer these questions. Please do uh, write in your answers because we really want to hear from you. Yeah, it's always really interesting to know what other people are doing. I think sometimes as teachers, 
we we teach in a sometimes an isolated atmosphere where we feel Absolutely. quite alone and it's always nice to know what your colleagues are doing what other teachers are doing and sharing sharing ideas really i mean i can say personally i've used well um, perhaps I, what, what has interest, interested me here is, is the idea of offering the next round mm -hmm. and the next round. So mm -hmm. you take it to another level and another level. Exactly. So you have your more drilling at the beginning, sort of the more the mechanics, and then you sort of introduce this choice exactly. and then more choice. And mm -hmm. so there's a deeper understanding. They're, they're really showing that they can use this language without mm -hmm. actually having to remember that they're they're, exactly. they're they're using it so it's a much deeper level now we have um some answers here thank you everybody for for writing in i'm just going to relay some of these um sarah again you're up first um no actually uh let's just see um mm, mm, mm. okay Nobody is. Nobody has answered. Y oh no! Yes, they have. Okay. They have. <laughs> Don't worry. We've got. Uh, let's see. Creativity involves using your imagination. No. We'll okay. go back up. No. So while Louise is as having, often. Oh, there we go. No. <laughs> while Louise as is having a look at possible. that, um, I'll just say that. Again, th these ideas that I've used and used in all of my classes and this idea of building it up and also I think it's really important the idea of bringing in vocabulary from other parts of the lesson whether it's storybooks, um, songs, any um, clear videos that you might have watched. So those um, ideas can come very naturally to us. Yes, we've got some ideas here. Okay, um, that's what we yes, want. Yes, <laughs> no, uh, we have. So, bear with me because people are so quick in answering and we've got so many answers here. Um, my pupils from Ignacio, um, Jose Ignacio says he, they love the hitting games. Right. TPR mm -hmm. um, is really interesting because children have fun while they internalize the vocabulary, um, says Ruth Gonzalez. Um, yes, Rocio Carazo says the visual revision, hitting the flashcards as well. Mm -hmm. So there seems to be a lot of TPR that, that works really well with the pupils. Um, Christina Newsom says she's used work uh, pair work before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, she'd be interested in using visual revision in art to recall vocabulary. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah, we've, we've got some of that. And um, that's up. coming up. Um, Rafael Valera says that um, they practice. He has practiced the vocabulary with his students using a game with bowling. Now this oh, wow, is interesting. That sounds fantastic. Each bowling has each bowling activity has a has a word of vocabulary. He says one word. His students must throw the ball to the correct bowling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that's quite an so interesting. So that's more a, that's TPR, a, it's yeah. more TPR, but it's a, it's a game. Mm -hmm. a thinking and and, and they have to and, and, and it's also you know motor control as well and Fantastic. and coordinating blindfolding myself. Haha. This is Marta <laughs> Fernandez. The Castro and drawing on the board what the that. children dictate. Exactly. She says it's hilarious. I think that's I so fun. Is. And I think, Louise, as well, that yeah. what's great is they don't believe that you're going to let them do it, first of all. You know, exactly. They, they think, oh, what, what's she going to draw? A big monster, let's say 20 eyes. And when you draw 20 eyes, you know, the absolute yes. joy that they have from thinking, oh, wow, we can control the teacher. <laughs> and they really go for it. And <laughs> the same with the lots of TPR ideas. Exactly. Um, just to say that um, Chantal says, hitting the flashcard during the morning routine. She gives um, one student the opportunity every class to choose any action, mm -hmm. and then the other um, students have to do it as many times as the <laughs> number is. That's it, that's and cruel, that's lovely. Eh? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps me fit, anyway. Okay. Yes. Okay, well, thank you, everybody, thank for you. your ideas. So let's move on. Um, just a bit of troubleshooting because one thing that usually comes up is this idea of how do we, in a larger group, um, 
offer choices whilst also being fair. I mean, that's a great example that we had just there. If the, if the pupils know that every morning someone gets to make that choice and it's a consistent thing, then there's never going to be any ill. But it's, it's my turn, I didn't have a turn. So, um, obviously structuring with stickers, lollipops, groups, teams, timetables, keeping it fair, keeping it timetabled and being consistent. Um, I think that's really important. So, uh, moving on to pre-primary story skills. So moving not away from choices, but a little bit along. Um, we're just gonna talk quickly about puppets. So this is Tiger. Hello, Louise. Hello, Tiger. How are you? I'm fine. <laughs> I'm happy. Good, <laughs> okay. So puppets are a fantastic classroom resource. I'm sure that a lot of people in the pre-primary classes are already using their puppet. Um, and primary. Exactly. I mean, I use mine, you know, primary teens and adults. I think they're very, very useful. So one great um, exercise is if you have a set of flashcards, is the puppet asking for the flashcards. If a puppet has a mouth that opens and closes, you can even feed them the flashcard. If not, they pick it up, they maybe throw it around. You know, they can be badly behaved because they're not the teacher. And um, also with shyer students, puppets are a great resource if someone doesn't want to speak mm. uh, because they often will speak to the puppet rather than speak to the teacher. Or, um, for example, you give them the puppet okay. and you ask them to use the puppet to ask their partner the same question. <laughs> okay. Hello, Karis. Hello. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thank ah, you. <laughs> me too. So what you can see there is even for us, Louise is playing with Tiger there with his voice. It makes you feel playful. It's the same with pupils. Um, a puppet can also be a way to be used as a stirrer or as a settler. So for example, if we say Tiger is very quiet, mm. shh, we all have to be very quiet. We're going to put him to, to bed, okay? <laughs> And then maybe you give him to the pupils to pass to each other silently until he goes to, to his known bed. Or you can practice prepositions or you can ask them to choose where they put mm -hmm. him. And again, waking him up and shouting at him to wake up is a good stirrer. Um, the puppet often helps me with story time. So because he has his two hands here, he turns the pages of the book um, he often can show if he's happy or if he's not happy with someone's um, behavior. He can be a good controlling aid, okay? And sometimes he can do things that are naughty and the pupils can correct the puppet and then not feel as if they're being corrected themselves. So the puppets are a fantastic resource. Going to the older primary um, age group, we've got lots of possible things which are actually in the handout as mm. well in more detail. Um, some fantastic things like interviewing characters, so taking on a character from a story and preparing as a class some questions. Say, How did you feel when you won the race? Why are you so mean to your brother? Okay. Um, news report, again for older primary, a great way to practice past tenses about what happened and also to see that everyone has a role. If people don't want to be in the middle of the, the drama, they can be, you know, a, a miming camera person, they can be holding the microphone, they can be saying three, two, one, action. All of these roles are just as important and they also give an idea of, of realism and um, retelling the story in your own way and telling an alternative mm -hmm. ending is a great mm -hmm. way for giving further choices and um, so carrying on on that idea of offering structure and offering choice and creative story skills within that structure we have story grids and story dice now the story grid is very easy to prepare simply on a, a piece of white paper divided into squares and on each square you write a piece of vocabulary whether it's um, a noun, an adjective or a verb depending on what you're studying. Students or pupils sorry, then have to 
make a story using all of this vocabulary in a way that makes sense. It's the same thing with dice. Mm -hmm. um, they are a visual aid. Simply roll the dice. Um, it's a bit more chance involved, mm. so more appropriate for older age groups. Okay, and lastly, for that topic, the flip book animation. These are great for teaching um, present continuous um, narration. He's doing, she's doing, what's happening, or what happened, if you want to go over the the past tenses and also passing them and describing and improvising around each other's resources. So um, other resources are online, story generators, um, stories online, you know there's a huge story wealth maker. of them. Story maker, yes, exactly. there's a lot of tools. Um, and you know some of these are known already to teachers so they're in the handout, we won't spend too much time mm -hmm. talking about them. But again, they offer a way to really create with the language. Okay, so visual response. We've got some options here. Um, drawing a picture based on something that you hear, responding to music, to how it makes you feel, or a particular sound, whether it's crackling paper or shaking something. Um, a great one that, that was suggested actually in the comments was how to revise uh, vocabulary and um, drawing, sculpting mm. a response, um, drawing cartoons, pictionary, okay, all of these are asking pupils to respond in their own way, in the way that they see it, which is what's important. So here um, you can see an example with my mm. class actually of some vocabulary revision. What do you think those are, Louise? Oh. How, old, how old are were the kids? They're actually five years old. Ah, okay. Right. Oof. Um, this one here, mm -hmm. well, it's a face. I don't know. It, maybe it's a character from a story. Mm -hmm. or look, it could be a monster. We were talking about monsters earlier. Mm -hmm. um, here, I, this could be a, a garden, maybe, okay. or, or a swimming pool. Um, and here it looks like some kind of building and maybe there's some kind of path here. Okay. I don't know, so fantasy <laughs> land. <laughs> it's interesting. These are simple wooden blocks from the, the tower building uh, toy. Um, the first picture that you can see with the circle and the triangle in the middle is actually an island with a mountain in it. Ah. We'll be learning some sea vocabulary. Then at the bottom we've got a book, a big book and a small book. And you were right, we've got a face. It's, a, it's actually a happy face. The smile was a bit difficult to get um, any bigger because we ran out of blocks. Yeah. <laughs> But um, it's a great way to get them using physically and working as a team yes, as well. Yes, because they're doing this together so they can exactly. correct each other while they can negotiate, no, and, and, and to create exactly. that. Mm, and you can also response. say, what else could it be? Mm. So they say it's an island, you say, what else does it look like or what else could it be, depending on the age? Or getting other groups, no, mm -hmm. to um, respond as I did. Exactly. No? Uh, because as I think you said before that there isn't a right or a wrong answer mm -hmm. necessarily and creativity is about being spontaneous and interpreting. Exactly. No. And saying yes it could be. And encouraging be. that. Yeah. We have a, a favourite phrase, yes and. So you always say yes and and add to it. And then here we've got some pictures um, from another class and these are just drawn responses. Okay to um, a unit that we studied on the sea, um, sea animals, sea mammals, sea creatures, and um, the idea of an island in the sea. So at the end of the unit, it was simply going through a recap and then asking them to just draw whatever they wanted, completely okay. their choice, in relation to their favorite thing about this unit. Okay. So you can see there's a, a well, a giant shark here. <laughs> oh, really? The shark yeah. was a very popular piece of vocabulary. Well, I can see a blue fish. Yeah. I'm sure that's yeah. a fish. And the pink one as well. <laughs> and they lo it looks like seaweed, no? Or maybe yes. it's 
Exactly. Not sure. And then in the others, we've got a range of Brilliant. things, you know, some mountains that look yeah. very, you know, psychedelic almost. Yeah. So How old again are these? These are four years four old. Four years of age. Yeah. Okay. And that was their imaginative response to a topic. Mm. And I think it shows how much they've absorbed mm. and how much they're able to then output from exactly. that. And you can do this with later primary exactly. uh, in primary yeah. and, and up to third primary five any and six age. any age any age okay so we have another poll okay great right. yes um louise and i are going to offer a choice in the spirit of the presentation <laughs> as to what people would like to see demonstrated between us so we've got four choices um draw a picture respond to a sound um, revising vocabulary by drawing a picture, draw, describe, draw with a partner, or pass and fold. Okay, so everybody, I'm going to give you about 10 seconds, 20 seconds, I don't think you need longer. Choose the option that you would like us to demonstrate now. Let's see. Oh my God, people are so wow. quick. <laughs> They're, They're waiting. So They're ready, ready to make waiting, their waiting. choices. I want to, I want to <laughs> answer the We don't know. Away. Okay, I'll just do another, as they say, update just to make sure that I've got okay, really the, the correct ready. data. Okay, one more just in case. Right, definite 35%, which is the winner. The first one, draw a picture, respond to sound, music, or story, or a heads down visualization. Okay, wow. Well, Louise, oh. <laughs> it's over to you. It's over so to me. So I'm going me. to give you a piece of paper huh? and a pen. Yes. And, um, you I'm tell going, me what to do. Yeah, I'm going to ask you, first of all, to close your eyes. Okay. And I'm just going to tell Louise a very simple um, story. So mm -hmm. as we were talking about the C vocabulary, we're going to talk about, imagine a beautiful, big beach, a golden beach. And the sea is very blue today. It's a sunny day. There are some children playing on the beach. They are very happy. What are they playing? What can you see, Louise? I think that they're <laughs> playing with a beach ball. A multi, yeah, a different colored beach ball. It's red, it's green, it's yellow, it's blue. There's a bit of white in there. <laughs> and they're throwing it in the air. And they're jumping and catching it. And they're running into the water and then they're running out. And I think they're shouting as well at the same time. Great. And then we would say, okay, draw what you see. Oof. But <laughs> don't think I have enough time, yeah. folks. We won't um. do that uh, <laughs> right now, but you would draw what you see. And then, of course, you would share it. And that's mm -hmm. when we're checking in with the language. What are they doing? What color is it? Is it big or small, depending on what you're teaching? You can also use you know, a set of sounds. For example, the sound of moving mm. pencils. Play music play music and see what it sparks in their imagination mm -hmm. and what it brings. Um, the, heads, the story activity is more guided, but simply responding to sounds and music is very, very fun and, and gets some mm -hmm. really great responses. And closing your eyes mm -hmm. helps you to really focus and you stop seeing other people and so it doesn't matter what they think, no? Your focus. Exactly, yeah. and when you open your mm. eyes, you just draw, so mm. there's no gap between it. Usually we don't say, ex explain what you saw, just simply say, draw it. Exactly. And then you're also bringing in new vocabulary for those things mm. that they've drawn but maybe can't describe, and that's also very interesting to mm. build on it. So thank you for, <laughs> for demonstrating <laughs> that. Okay, um, celebrating creative energy in the moment. Um, very, very quickly, often people ask me, that's great, we want to do it, wonderful, but in a big class, how on earth do you manage that? I say, okay, it's all about routines and structures. So with the pre-primary, it's about the class routines, which every teacher of pre-primary knows about, and building on to those which already exist. I would say with primary, it's about creating a routine that's either a freeze routine, like counting down 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, freeze, or using the word statues, 
and making sure that the first few times you do it, it is absolutely clear that there's no room for error. And you can make that a game. It's not about telling people off. It's about saying, are you moving? Okay, er, we have to do it again and again and again. So it becomes a game to get it right. And then, you know, you're drilling that um, exercise so that it becomes part of the class routine. Again, pretending to use a remote control also works. But the one that I use personally mm. in my classes is simply statues or a freeze countdown with older ones. Okay, and, and that usually is absolutely fine. So, mm -hmm. um, we've reached the end nearly okay. of what we're doing. So, I'd like to invite everybody who's watching to take part in a similar imagination exercise to, to the one that Louise did. So I'm going to very quickly describe something to you and then we're going to ask you to have your say mm -hmm. and respond with what you can see. So if you imagine that you're walking through a beautiful garden, it's a sunny day, you're very relaxed, there are lots of flowers and trees in the garden, lots of colours, there are lots of birds around you, you can hear them singing, you pass a beautiful fountain, you're very happy. And then you come to a wall with a door. You decide to open the door and go through it. What do you see? So all you have to do is write one sentence or a few words to describe what you see when you open the door mm -hmm. and go through it. Exactly. Okay, so we'll give you again about 10, 15 seconds more it's or less a to do pressured that. pressured imagination. <laughs> There's no right answer and obviously if you were doing this with your class you would uh, build this up to the moment where they have the, the creative choice and then simply ask them to open their eyes and draw what they see or mime what they see. Okay, Marta Fernandez says nothing. <laughs> Dark. However, however, wait, okay. wait. However, um, let me just go down. Mm, there's a sound coming from the corner. Oh my goodness, Oy. Marta Fernandez is a horror story writer <laughs> in the making. <laughs> Chandal says, a candy village. Oh, lovely. Nice one. I am Celia Martinez says, I see a lot of children playing in a big playground. Oh, lovely. Uh, Rafael Valera, uh, I see a country with a lot of sweets. Yes, kids, I can, yes. <laughs> Miguel Angel Rodriguez says there's another beautiful garden. Right. Okay, so it just goes on, doesn't it? And um, Josefina Cullera Pereira says I can see a very busy street in a city. Okay. Lourdes, there's a cat playing with some mice. Oh. Uh, Christina says a rainbow and a pot of gold, given that it's say, ah, claro. St. Patrick's <laughs> Day, 17th of March. Um, in a few days time, so pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Somebody else, Begonia, a big lake with ducks. Great. Wow, there's lots of, you can see Creative. the variety exactly. of responses. There's no end. There's no there? end, there's no right answer. And also it, it lets you know what's going on in the people's minds. You know, exactly. obviously someone's thinking of an afternoon snack and someone's thinking of St. Patrick's Day and someone else is happy exactly. in the garden. So that's great. Thank it's you everybody great. for your responses. We've got to encourage creativity because we want people to be able to use language confidently, spontaneously and collaborate with their, their classmates in a natural way and just to feel confident and able exactly. to use the language and you know we've talked about why throughout the, the presentation and people are obviously doing it and we need more of it I think, more choice more creativity, more spontaneous language use, and trust your pupils and see where it takes you. Great. Okay. So let's, um, I said at the beginning, we'd give you an opportunity to send in any comments or a few questions that you may have regarding the content. Please do that now. Um, thank you so much, Carissa. We hope that you have found these teacher training videos of real use and relevance to your classes. We would like to remind you that you can find many more practical teaching ideas and tips, articles and video clips in Macmillan Advantage. 
Don't miss this opportunity to continue your professional development.